for it now. Some of the worst things that have happened in our country about keeping people separate have happened because of transportation and infrastructure where highways have gone through communities, highways have split communities, highways have been driven through places that black people lived in yep. in this country. That's hard to change. How do we think about infrastructure in a serious way that that centers equity uh, in the middle of the conversation? It's critically important, and it is challenging. Uh, you know, if you have segregation caused by, let's say, uh, a discriminatory hiring policy, at least in theory, on paper, that policy could be changed overnight. Right. You can't change the location of a highway overnight. And so if it went, especially if it went by design, on a pathway that divided a white community from a black community, or removed uh, a racially minoritized neighborhood, which happened time and time again, yeah. north and south in this country. Uh, it's going to take a lot to address that. Again, this is an example of where many of the solutions will come from the local level. Uh, our job is, first of all, to provide the resources. And secondly, to provide an expectation that the future decisions we make about where resources go promote and do not diminish equity. Uh, you know, the, the history of transportation and justice are much more closely connected than people think. Uh, I know it's not the first area of policy you think of, maybe when you're thinking about civil rights, for example, but from Plessy versus Ferguson, which is about who got to sit where on a train, to the Montgomery bus boycott, the truth is they've never been separated. Is that a role? Is there a, an, a, a role that the federal government has in sort of saying, here's how we look at this and here's how we fix it over time? I think there is, and it's something that we've tried to make clear from the moment I came in in this department. For example, if a community is trying to apply for a competitive grant for federal dollars that my department oversees, one of the things we expect to see is that the voices of underserved and overburdened people who had been impacted by that, or would be impacted by it, that those voices are heard, that they're part of the decision-making process. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the voices of those who have been most excluded have to be in the lead in shaping solutions. And when they are, often the entire community is better off.